Okay then, so um, let's continue with our lecture here on the next chapter. We finish with the <coughs> with the MOS transistor, and now we are looking at the CMOS inverter. So um, I think we've probably seen um, the inverter before in our previous slides. Uh, if you remember the uh, the back to back um, inverters, where you want to calculate the the MOS capacitance. But basically, an inverter we combine one N MOS and P MOS together. To, to obtain the, the CMOS inverter. <coughs> okay, so let's see first the voltage transfer characteristics of the um, of the CMOS inverter or the inverter. Uh, so what is a VTC? So VTC is basically a V out versus V in plug. Okay, so you have a V out and a V in, and here's your V out and V in. So instead of looking at logic level, so in this course we are looking at the um, uh, the actual voltage, okay, the actual signal or the voltage, um, the transition, uh, the actual voltage transition um, on the output as we give uh, uh, the input values. Okay, so 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 basically, what we want to see here is um, some parameters that we need to know. Uh, we have the uh, let's look at the VOH, okay, output high. So here is actually the voltage at which um, uh, the output is considered as logic high. Okay, and then we have the output low. Okay. And then um, we have the VM. Okay, switching threshold where um, V out equals to V in. Okay, the condition when um, the value of V out is exactly the same as the value of V in. We call the switching threshold Vm, so that is an important parameter. We're going to see later. So this is basically the the VTC. Let's see. Vm next. So from the VTC, from the voltage level, how do we map uh, the voltage to an actual logic level? Is it logic one or logic zero? Okay. So as we know, if it's uh, if the voltage is high. Generally, it's logic logic one. If the if the voltage is low, then is considered as logic zero. So uh, the regions of acceptable high and low voltages are delimited by V I H input high and V I L input low. That represent the points on the V T curve where the gain is equals to negative one. So this is quite an important concept to understand. Uh, from your V T C, what you need to do is you need to find. Um, the point on the VTC where uh, the slope, okay, uh, which is basically uh, dV out over dV in, okay, uh, on the graph is equals to negative one, and uh, the part where it uh, the 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 input value when the uh, uh, slope is negative one is called the uh, input low. Okay, input low, and then um, okay the, the the part where the slope is negative one is both input low and input high depending on um, the the position um, of the of of v, v out. So if if v out is closer to to a higher uh, to, to 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 VDD, then is input low. If it's closer to zero, then the VIH is input high, so 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 um, in in the middle we have undefined region, okay? Because uh, for the input of the inverter we can give any value, all right? Let's say here is two point five volts, okay? Here is zero, so um, you know we can give one point two five in the middle, right? Um, so one point two five volt is considered to be undefined region. It's not logic one. It's not logic zero. Um, so from that we need to define what is the range of voltages that is considered as logic one and what is the range of voltages that are considered as logic zero. Okay, so as we, as as we can see here, um, any values uh, larger than uh, VIH, okay, um, larger than VIH is considered logic one. And any values uh, smaller than VIL is considered logic zero. Okay, 
So you can see from the VTC, uh, VIL, okay. Uh, so that, that's our margin. Basically, you can say that's our margin. Um, where we have a, we have a, um, a, lo a logic zero margin. Okay, what's the range of voltage to be considered logic zero? And we have a high margin. Uh, the voltage, the input voltage that we considered as logic one. Okay, so... Okay, so now we go to the margins. So for robust circuits, we want zero and one interval to be as large as possible. Okay, if, if, if possible, we don't, we don't like the undefined region. We don't want to have, ideally, we don't want to have the undefined region, but practically, um, we cannot avoid it. Okay, we, uh, we, we want every uh, input voltage to have, uh, to, to, to be designated as either one or zero. Okay, but um, in, in here, actually, we, we define uh, the noise margin high as the range from um, VOH to VIH yeah and um, uh, the, uh, and, and we define the noise margin low as the range between uh, VIL to um, VOL okay basically the, the, the difference between um, the output high input high and input low output low okay so these two are quite an uh, important equation, but also un important to understand the concept. Uh, what what it means by uh, noise margin high and noise margin low, okay? And and usually we consider the noise margins at the input of the gate, uh, the input of the inverter. Um, uh, what is the margin uh, to have on the input such that we can designate as a one or zero, okay? Okay, so we, we, we're going to revisit this uh, later on. So this is the ideal inverter. As, as I mentioned to you, there is no undefined region. So as you can see here, um, uh, even if we provide, even if we provide the, uh, so, so even if we provide the input as um, VDD over 2, we, we are going to have a value of either 1, uh, of zero or, 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 or logic zero or logic one okay we are not getting anywhere in the middle okay ideally that, that, that that's what's supposed to happen so in this case uh, what is your noise margin so your your noise margin is is basically um, uh, so here VIL is in fact equals to VIH okay you have the same position and and here is your VO output high and here is your V output low okay and therefore your 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 noise margins is um, is here okay so here is your noise margin low okay uh, which is between VIL and um, uh, between VIL VOL and then we have oops I'm up to there okay and here is your noise margin high between VOH and VIH. Okay, and here is your VDD. Okay, or your VOH. And here is your VOL slash ground. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, uh, old time inverter, this is quite interesting to see. It's not important now. I think I'm going to skip this. Um, but what it's saying here is that. Um, uh, uh, long time ago used to be that the inverter is really and is really not ideal okay um, but i think we're gonna skip this okay so uh, this is this is called the cmos inverter so um basically what happened is you have a you have a pmos here and you have an nmos okay and um uh other things you need to know is for a, for a pmos the source is on the on the vdd uh, we have the drain here of the PMOS, we have the drain of the NMOS and the source of the NMOS and here, here is you have a common gate. Okay, and this is the output node. Um, and we have the CL, if you remember we already derived the CL and I'm going to look more on the CL later on, it's a very very important concept uh, if you are dealing with power and, and, and delay. Okay, uh, steady state response, so, so as we've seen in the previous chapter on MOS transistor that um, 
we can model the transistor as a switch. If it's on, then we have current through it. If it's off, then it's an open circuit. Um, and what is the condition to be on and off? So if you remember the PMOS to be on, the, imp the, the VGS must be negative enough. Uh, and for NMOS, it must be positive enough, uh, greater than VT. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, so, so here what happens if your input is zero? So um, if you want to uh, visualize this, um, so, 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 so basically it looks something like this. V in okay so what what happened if your uh, input is logic zero uh, means zero volt so if you remember zero volt if, if it's zero then your VGS okay your VGS of your PMOS is going to be negative enough so then you have ID current going down okay and what about what about the NMOS if you put zero here um, so this is your source so your VGS is actually zero, okay? Your VGS is zero, uh, therefore your NMOS is off. Okay, here is on. So that's why here you can see that um, if V in is equal to zero, then we are simply going to charge your output node to, uh, 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 to, to, to VOH, okay? Okay, we're gonna charge to VOH. It could be one, it could be, I mean, it could be 2.5 volt, it could be less. Uh, that depends on, on, on how we design it. Um, but, but basically, uh, when V in is zero, we are going to charge the output node to full VDD. Okay. Now, what happens if, if, if your V in is equals to um, VDD in this case? So if you imagine it's in, in, in this picture here, so if you imagine that if you put VDD on your input, your gate terminal, then you can see that the NMOS uh, is actually on because your VGS now is VDD. Okay, and VDD is greater than the threshold voltage and therefore it's on. Okay, and your PMOS, um, your PMOS now, your VGS on the PMOS is zero. Okay, zero. So it's not negative enough, right? So uh, VDD minus VDD on the VGS. Um, therefore, it's an open circuit for the PMOS. And, and in that case, we have a... Uh, a, a direct path from your output node to ground so your, your current will be discharged um, the, the capacitor uh, the, the, seal, the, the load capacitor on VR will be discharged to ground and therefore your VR will be pulled down to zero so here we call it pull down pull down and here is a pull up okay so this is the concept the pull up pull down concept on the on the inverter Okay, what, what are the properties of, of um, uh, this, the uh, CMOS inverter? So ideally, you want a full rail-to-rail -rail swing with a high noise margin, as we have seen. Um, logic levels not dependent upon the relative device sizes. Transistors can be minimum size, ratio-less. Uh, always a path to VDD or ground uh, in steady state. Low output impedance. Okay, why do we want low output impedance? So we have high current and very fast to... Um, to charge the output node or very fast to discharge the output node. Um, extremely high input resistance, uh, nearly zero steady state input current. So, um, so when the transistor is in the off state, we want it to be 100% off, means there's no leakage, okay, which is not ideal. Um, but it's quite close, it's quite close, especially for all the technology. The newer technology, you have more issues actually with, uh, with leakage. Uh, no direct path in steady state between power and ground. No static power dissipation. Okay, this one we'll see more in the in the in the power uh, power optimization. Um, uh, because it, uh, again, even though your MOS sensor is supposed to be off, supposed to be open circuit, but actually it's not 100% open circuit. So you have static power dissipation there. Propagation delay or uh, propagation delay function of load capacitance and resistance of transistors okay so so th this is this is somewhat true okay your delay actually depends on your cl and also the resistance of your of your transistors because your delay everything about delay depends on how fast can you charge your cl if you can charge fast 
quickly bring it to logic one then we are fast if you are slow to to put your logic one inside cl then you are slow so it all depends on um how big is your um resistance okay ideally you want a small resistance so that we have fast current i mean more current and then we want a small capacitance as well right so you can charge faster okay so um short channel iv plot of the pmos i think we have seen this in the previous chapter already okay so i think um this is related to uh, the quiz that i gave you um so 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 basically the pmos here is 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 uh uh this is a a, a small channel uh, uh sorry a short channel so a short short channel so basically what happened is you have a, a vd set um somewhere some some somewhere here okay where if your vds is smaller than your vd set then it's in a velocity saturation okay uh okay so the purpose is actually to show the load lines but i think i'm not going to go through um uh, this one i'm going to skip i'm going to skip transforming the pmos and the inverter load lines uh it's not it's, it's, it's not so relevant now so um let's skip those part okay so uh this one is more important this one is uh, more important and more interesting to see actually uh as we sweep up or as we give uh, more voltage on the input from zero to vdd um what is the mode of operation of your transistors okay we have uh, remember we have two transistors so we have the nmos and the pmos uh, so so when it, when, when for example here when when v in is zero okay when when v in is zero uh, it means that your pmos is on okay your nmos is open circuit is off your vgs is zero okay so that's why here we have nmos off and pmos is on but the pmos is on but what is the um, mode of operation okay it could be in linear or resistive region it could be in saturation it could be in velocity saturation so you can analyze that and um, uh, what one example is um, uh, in, 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 in this case uh, we, we can say that uh, it's not always true you have to make our own analysis uh, when we give the voltage because it depends on you know um, the size of your uh, transistors it depends on, 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 on other parameters as well <coughs> so so in this case for example you, uh, something interesting to see is in the beginning um if you put if you put zero then the pmos is resistive now as we increase further um the the nmos now switch on okay uh the nmos now switch on becomes saturated pmos maintaining linear and then as we give more voltage to the input we have uh nmos saturation still pmos resistive and this is quite interesting here what happened when the input is 1.25 vdd over 2 so in that case we have a velocity saturation on the nmos normal saturation on the pmos and then as we give more voltage we can see uh, pmos saturate nmos resistive and finally as we expected pmos will be off um, at 2.5 on the input and nmos resistive okay so the switch model uh, i think we've gone through we're going, to, we're going to look through more on this one but here gate response time is determined by the time to charge cl through rp okay and discharge cl through rn so, so as i mentioned to you um the how fast how fast is your uh your cmos circuit depends on how fast can you charge your cl okay that's basically the concept that uh, how fast can you charge it the faster you can charge it the faster you get okay um transistor sizing okay so so and um, this is this is very important if you are if you're working as a, um, a circuit design a circuit design engineer then um, one of your tasks is maybe to uh, to provide sizes uh, for the for the transistors for the gates okay um, not, not only gates I mean in a, in, a, in, a, in a full circuit maybe tens uh, hundreds of uh, logic gates uh, what should be the optimum size of your of your uh, MOS transistors in your gates. So, so the key thing here is when designing static CMOS circuits, 
you need to balance the driving strength of the transistors by making the PMOS section wider than the NMOS section. Okay, so 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 why is this? We're gonna see later on. Um, we want to have the noise margin maximized. Okay, remember we don't want to have undefined region. We want to have as wide as possible for logic one, as wide as possible for logic zero, and we want asymmetrical characteristics. Okay, means that your noise margin for low, the 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 the, the value for noise margins are the same for low and high. All right, so we have a balance. Uh, uh, balance uh, VTC okay we'll, we'll have a look at more on this one later okay so switching threshold we go through on the on the next part of the video